Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Sunless Skies. Today we are going to be talking to the amenable host, I feel, in Magdalene's. Assuming I can still talk to him. Aha, here we go, a meeting with the amenable host, the founder and master of ceremonies at Magdalene's. He has requested you by name. An attendant escorts you through the dazzling violet corridors. The host's red door is always open. The attendant leaves you just as the clock begins to chime. The amenable host reclines on a couch of crushed velvet, a goblet of sparkling wine in his long fingers. Somewhere in the tower above him, the great clock ticks away. As a policy, the host's atrium is always open to guests. He is available to hear opinions, friendly criticism, and suggestions. Today, he has a headache. Well, let's listen to the amenable host's request. He beckons you close. His voice is soft and sibilant, like butter melting in candlelight. A guest has become rather too attached to a particular attendant. He always requests that the same attendant appear in the exact same guise. The amenable host's lip curls in distaste. He reiterates the aim of Magdalene's, a place of healing and respite. It was not meant to feed obsession or self-indulgent self-loathing. This guest brings sickness. I would have him purged. I have a dossier on our guest, if you're interested in helping. The amenable host would like to talk to you about a difficult guest. I think we can help out here. Let's take the lacrimose guest's dossier. The amenable host has requested help in removing a customer who is blurring the boundaries of healer and patient. The amenable host smiles indulgently. I am so glad you want to help. He produces a thin slither of pages and passes them to you. I'd recommend taking on the role of one of our attendants. That way, you'd be playing the role of someone significant to him. The amenable host sighs, reaching for his goblet. He knows all of our attendants by voice now. Someone new is needed. Okay, so can we find him in the House of Small Comfort, I assume? Ah, uh -huh, here we go. We can deal with a lacrimose guest. He stands on the threshold of the treatment chambers, his hands trembling. The attendants on duty have been informed about your involvement. How do you plan to deal with him? A treatment chamber has been emptied for you, should you wish to adopt a guise from his past. Alternatively, he's standing right there. He does not seem to have noticed you, his eyes instead boring through the doors of the treatment rooms. So we can either approach this directly, disguises have caused the poor sod enough trouble. We can disguise yourself as his mother. If you drove them apart once, an attendant will help you with the wig and makeup, another with the voice. Or we can disguise ourselves as his lover. The attendant, normally on duty, is more than happy to assist you. Anything, as long as you get rid of him. Um, let's go with as his lover. The attendant daubs your lips the correct shade and finishes colouring your eyes. He likes him to be jovial, cannot bear him to be sad. This proves correct when the lacrimose guests appears. You weep, you lie, you wheedle. You are unhappy here, doing this. By the end, you are both in tears. Neither of you will be returning again, here, as you are. I feel that went remarkably well. Let's speak to the amenable host. An attendant escorts you through the dazzling violet corridors. The host's red door is always open. The attendant leaves you just as the clock begins to chime. Let the amenable host know the lacrimose guest is gone. For better or worst, he will not be returning to Magdalene's. The amenable host smiles, 
be typically. Of course, my staff will be pleased. It's a risk of our trade, when our clients can no longer separate identity and illusion, but seldom pleasant. He sighs deeply, echoing around the chamber like a newly freed dove. It's a trap any of us could fall into. His face darkens briefly. Here, take this. He fishes around beneath his couch for one of his goblets. It'll fetch a pretty price. Take it with my thanks, and do visit us again. Hey, a hundred sovereigns. Does he have anything else for us? Let's speak to him again. Yeah, listen to the amenable host's request. He is melancholy today. Not to mention irritable. He has a job for you, he says, his voice rich with unhappiness. I admired your discretion earlier, he sighs. You have seen the dangers of our work upon those who abuse our service, yet we are not immune to it ourselves. He draws your attention to several paintings on the walls. My regulars have, at various points, requested that I be a prospector on Lustrum, heir to a fine house in Port Prosper, and a titan of industry on New Winchester. Very specific requests, and more, I have vivid memories of being all three, yet all cannot be true, surely. He presses a locket into your hand. This bears my image, see if anyone remembers me. I can't remember who I was before this. If I could be other than I am, I'd like to know. Okay, well we only know where New Winchester is. We haven't found Lustrum or Port Prosper, but I guess we could we could go back to New Winchester? Seems like a good plan. Okay, well there was a bargain, was there not? I am tempted to pick up some of these so we can sell them in London. I'll take four. The punctilious excavator is selling precisely labelled lenses dug from one of the ruins of the Reach. You hold the lens up to the distant light and see a soul, wispy and restless, stir within. There's a soul trapped in every one, the excavator murmurs, as if unwilling to intrude. Okay, well, yeah, I shall buy them. And I shall take these back to New Winchester. Let's go. How far away is New Winchester? Uh, if we go this way, it's not too bad. I'll go the way I know. I could try and find a way up to this way, but I have a funny feeling it's not as straightforward as I think it is. Which is usually how it goes. Uh, yeah, so we just go straight forward and then follow it round to the left. And hope we don't run out of fuel, because we are... Oh no, supplies. Okay, we're running out of supplies, not fuel. We have quite a lot of fuel. Which is... Supplies are easier to sort out. Mostly because we can eat the crew. I assume that's still a thing. <laughs> From Southern Seas. <laughs> yeah, we've got plenty of crew. What they're there for is what we pay them for. Admittedly, my terrors... Surprisingly high. Considering I haven't done anything, I probably should have lowered it in Magdalene's before I left, but I can always go back that way. We need to find Port Prosper as well. Which is to the south southeast. You'd think it'd be like down down here, but I don't know, it seems really far away for Port Prosper, but then Port Prosper does have a gate to New Albion, I believe it's New Albion. I can't remember the name of it. Hey look, a wreck. A wreck gleams with frost. Its windows are dark, its engines silent. Uh, do we need to repair? No, let's see if we can get in. Force open the doors to the hold. Frost has locked them, but a pry bar makes an effective key. Ah, oh, we failed. Oh yes, I forgot I had no crew. Your crew attach cables to the rack to hold it steady as they pry apart the doors. So 
sudden gust of wind rocks both vessels, and the young man, straining at the pry bar, slips. He cries out, his hand mangled on a torn edge of metal. He is likely to lose his fingers. The treasure you retrieve from the hold will be little comfort to him. Wait, do I still get the... Yay, I still get the loot. Let's go. A distressingly odoured battle. No one is keen to get close. An uncanny specimen. You pry the lid off. Dear God, what the blazes? The navigator pokes the thing inside with a big stick until assured that it's dead. Oh dear, hello. Oh. I showed that piece of uh, scrap who was boss. Ooh. That was a little stressful. You prepare to board the buckled wreckage, poised to plunder the plunderers. We can raid the safe to gain sovereigns, or we can seek unusual items. I think I actually want the sovereigns here. How much is it? I don't remember. 21? Hmm. The marauders haunt the reach like bats in an attic. They spend their ill-gotten gains in the more licentious ports, inquiring sins in the riot of Lustrum before weeping their confessionals at Magdalene's. A few meagre funds remain. I will take those meagre funds. I desperately need them. Can I go this way? I was hoping they were going to drop supplies, though. We desperately need more crew. I hope crew isn't overly expensive, otherwise we might be in trouble. Ah, the clamour of New Winchester can be heard on the wind. Familiar as a disagreeable uncle. Since we're getting nice and close. That should just be straightforward from here. We also have some port reports that we can hand in to Company House or the other one. Ah, here we are at New Winchester. We made it. Wait, isn't Company House slash the other one on a different area here? Hmm, I don't remember. Let's see. Does anyone want any souls? Just asking for a friend here. The Parmissuous Chairman. The Chairman of the Windward Company is looking to outfit a dozen more engines with the appropriate precautions. He requires guns in satisfactory quantities. Deliver up to three carefully packed crates of munitions to Port Prosper. I don't have any, but I'm going to pick it up. Because i got space for it. Munitions can be reliably purchased at the Royal Society and the Imperium, or sometimes salvaged from tackety liberators from the Flotsam and Jetsam. Can I sell these souls? I can sell... Oh wait, I have one pack of carefully packed creative munitions. Oh, I also have... Should I sell that? No, I'm gonna keep... I'm gonna keep hold of that. Let's sell these... souls, because I desperately need the money. Equipment. Now that you've saved some money, it might make sense to buy some locomotive equipment from Abraham's Engineering. If you have at least 1,500 sovereigns... I don't think I do. You could even buy a new locomotive from Wolves the Engine Yard. I hmm, I would like to get the mining equipment, but I do believe that would cost me most of my money. So I'm not going to do that just yet, especially since I need a higher crew, which I am going to do right now. Four to six, how much is this going to cost me? Eighty? Oh my god. The station is clouded with smog. Faces loom out of the grey. They stumble aboard, blinking away the fog. Cool, they say. Bids! Oh, well, we're six out of ten. I think that, uh... I think that levels us out a little bit. Uh, do I need to explore the city for the Amenable Hosts quest? Yes, I do. Search for the Amenable Host's identity. A titan of industry, 
was a rare outside of Albion. The initial search is fruitless. People giggle at the antiquated fashion on display in the, oh my god, the Deguero type? That's an early form of photography. Deguero, or Deguero is the name of the man who invented it, but my brain saw the word and just didn't know how to say it. The tilt of the jaw, the unfortunate arrangement of hair. But the proprietor of the round table seems to recognise the face. Oh yeah, right sod he was. He holds a locket up to catch the falling starlight through a window. What did open up a factory here a few years back? Something went wrong and there was a worker's revolt. Not been the same since. Assumed identity. You've uncovered nothing definitively conclusive here. You may return to the amenable host, or look elsewhere. We're going to try and look in all the places if we can. Assuming we find Lustrum. Or poor Prosper. I don't think we have any clues as to where Lustrum is either. I know it's in the snowy area, so that should narrow it down slightly. Uh, okay. There was something else here, wasn't there? A scrubbed clerk begs for a moment of your time. I represent Halages, the banking house. I promise this will take only a moment of your unquestionably valuable time. He produces a folded contract with a flourish. We hear promising things about you, my lady. Very promising indeed. We would like to extend our services. We provide a secure solution for the storage of your assets, absolute discretion, and steadfastness unto death and beyond. We require only a signature. Sign my name. The offer is entirely complimentary, I assure you. At Halages, we measure ourselves by the quality of our clientele. This will unlock a bank vault, allowing you to store and withdraw items at any hub port. Which is arguably the best thing in sunless skies compared to seas. I am certain that this represents the beginning of a long and warm relationship between ourselves and your lineage. May it endure... I bid you good day, my lady. You may access your bank in the central port of any region. You will find it in the area in the list of areas on the left-hand menu when docked. Select to transfer items between your hold and the bank. You'll be able to access the contents of your bank at any hub port. If your captain dies, the contents of your bank will be inherited by your next captain. Which is brilliant. Yeah, we now have a bank with nothing in it. <laughs> <laughs> um, we we need to get some supplies. That's what we need. Oh god, this is gonna this is gonna cost me all my money, isn't it? Well, there goes all the money we earned from the amenable host. Uh, I still have four hundred sovereigns. Uh, do I want to buy the pneumatic mining array or the canning station? It's a bad idea to spend all of my money. I'm not going to do it just yet. I'm going to hold off. It's going to annoy me, but I'm going to hold off. Um, so, should we go and try and find Port Prosper? That seems to be the next logical thing to do. Uh, and try and find some trouble on the way. Nothing here. Is there no more stories? Encoded letter. Still can't do that. Don't have a Tale of Terror. At least I don't think I picked up a Tale of Terror. No, I didn't. Tale of Terror? Savage Secrets, sorry. Um... For a second there, my brain went to just fall in London. Explore the city, let's make sure there's nothing here. No, okay. Right, let's, let's go exploring. South, southeast. South, southeast. I'm gonna go via the memorial to the unknown rats. Lower my terror slightly. Oh, my terror's gone down. Is that because I docked at New Winchester? I don't... Hmm, I don't quite remember how the terror system works in... Some of the skies. Or is that because I was in combat and I won? On the plus side, we have crew now. Which... Is very useful. Not that I've been throwing them to the wolves or anything. What kind of captain do you think I am? I will, however, take... Oh, hello. Loading into a new chunk there. I will, however, take any sort of combat encounter I can get, because I need the money. 
We, d we desperately need... Well... Munitions. So if we see any tackety scouts, we'll take them down. I'm going to press F here. See what the bat finds. I don't think it's going to find anything. We're treading water we already know. Oh, we found something. Oh, really? That's not the way I'm going. Oh. That's just annoying. Let's go check it out. I don't know why, but I have just remembered that the Reach had a massive update. You can... Uh, you can watch my... I wouldn't advise watching my original Sun in the Skies playthrough, but it does exist. You can actually go back and see this game, like when it first came out, when it was just the Reach, and there wasn't any of the other stuff around it. And it was before they did the big art update. And it looks so different, and it looks so good now. So, so good. Hey, a homestead. Uh, this homestead appears to be thriving. A family gathers outside to welcome you. Blue smoke coils from the chimney. Uh, oh, I don't know. Uh, trade carefully packed munitions for bronze wood. Uh... Should I eat my fill? Reduce my tower at Lister. Hospitality is important on the frontier. The settlers invite you to join them for a meal. Terror's fallen. You enjoy a meal of sticky porridge and viney vegetables. Afterwards, you and your hosts exchange non committal observations on the war between stovepipes and techities. Your crew are content for a time. One of them even speculates idly about settling down. Hey, you, bugger off. Unless it's the guy, unless it's the surviving member of my previous crew. In which case, then, feel free to settle. I'm not going to fit through that gap, am I? Wait, wait. Fine. <laughs> Thread the needle. It's fine. We're a tiny train. Oh, yeah, if it's the guy who survived the massacre of the previous crew, then I think he deserves the right to settle down. But if it's the people who I just hired, sit back down, crew. I have need for you. South, southeast. Could be down here, I suppose. No, south... It definitely would scream here. Hmm. Hmm. I'll find it. I would like to find Port Prosper before we finish the episode. It would be very nice. And it has to be around here somewhere. It's also a very useful port. Because it sells hours, I believe. Does it sell hours? It sells something that's useful. Oh, let's not go that way. I don't want to go to Bradley, whatever. I didn't go to the Memorial of the Rat. I guess I don't really need to. Ah, I don't want to waste the fuel now. My bad. I'll get it on the way back, assuming I don't die. I'm going to send out the bat. That's what I'm going to do. Oh, wait. Hello. Please have supplies on you. The wreck gleams with frost. We can signal the de the wreck. The windows of the crew quarters are occluded with frost. But was that movement you just saw? Let's see if our mirrors will actually get us a crew member here. Your signaller fetches their signal lamp and flashes a patient message into each port side window. There, a faltering glow burns in the frost. Someone has struck a match. You dispatch a boarding party, they retrieve a survivor who is eager to sign on, and, and a hard worker, if surely from their long isolation. Wonderful. Free crew member, never say no. Uh, let me just send out a bat. I miss my owl. I have the cyclopean owl in my last playthrough. He could spot two things, I believe. But there is upgrades to the to the scouting bats that I should probably be trying to get. Do I want to fight that? No, not really. <laughs> the HML joy was never sure. Love it. Oh, forgotten factories. Ah, oh, I don't have a saying. Ooh, oh, I forgot how... I forgot how much stuff is in this game that you require. Whoop, that was the horn. 
It's found something. Is this can't be south southeast? I guess it could be Port Prosper. It kind of looks like Port Prosper. The bridge's clock chimes twice. Quickly. This close to the Isambard line. Time is devious. Port Prosper, here we go. Oh, it's in a completely different place. In my last playthrough, it was over here. Interesting. I guess that kind of confirms my uh, idea that it was... I'm going to go through here. No, this is random. I'm going to go through here and see if I can tag the gate. Here we go. I don't want to get in it because I don't think I can afford the travel. But uh, I just want to tag it for the experience. And it will mark it on the map. There we go. So that Albion. Yeah, it was Albion. Good. I didn't remember the name of the place. All right, let's dock at Port Prosper. We'll drop off the uh, the lady before we end the episode. Crammed at the feet of a hulking crag, Port Prosper is a little London, divided into an affluent west end and an impunctuous east. Queen's Cross is a busy station, crowded with engines that have arrived through the nearby transit relay from Albion. We go deliver the fastidious inspector. She disembarks with her bag in hand and peers up at a clock tower that is being raised above the station. She disembarks her with her bag in hand and peers up at a clock tower that is being raised above the station. It is tangled with scaffolding and rings with the sound of hammers and the cries of workmen. We can accept our payment. The inspector will depart. Be sure you've held any conversation with her that you wish to. I think we have. You will receive fuel and supplies in addition to a sum of money. Ensure you have six spaces in your hold before accepting. I have exactly six. Thank you, Captain. Here is the balance of our agreement. And, as promised, a requisition order for fuel and supplies. He casts another glance at the incomplete clock tower. Given the apparent state of construction, I'd recommend you visit the worksite. There may be an opportunity there. And thank you for the pleasant conversation, Captain. The sky can be a lonely place. You've enlivened it. I have included a small additional sum in your remuneration as a token of my gratitude. Hey, 150 sovereigns, 60 experience, and 3 fuel, 3 supplies. They plan to call it the Albert Clock, in memory of the departed Prince Consort. But there is a way to go yet. The roof isn't finished. And the clock neither ticks nor bongs. You can see the fastidious inspector up among the workings with a spanner and a can of oil, showing the workman how it's done. Let's ask the horse foreman what they need. Perhaps you can secure it. Groundswood, the foreman wheezes bluntly. One consignment. They sell it at Traitor's Wood and at Polymer and Plenty's, I hear. And a gourd of cloister nectar, too. This bunch of work-shy ingrates need constant shouting at, and my voice has given up the ghost. Some nectar should have me bellowing again like a champion. Carillion's your best bet. There, or Titania, the flower town, or pay like. If you can purchase the necessary goods and return them to Port Prosper, you'll make a tidy profit. Be warned, the materials aren't cheap, and they'll occupy space in your hold. Okay, well let me just quickly write that down. I'm sure it's in my uh, journal in-game, but uh, it's easier for me to just write it down in my book, otherwise I'll forget about it. Oh, let's take my leave. And I think this is where I shall end this episode. We shall look around Port Prosper in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, let me know what you think. Your comments are greatly appreciated. And as always, I'll see you next time.